Today I want to discuss how Big Bang believers don't want to know how matter is produced without any matter because that will invalidate the Big Bang Theory. So understanding matter production involves four basic questions and some more. The basic questions being how is matter produced without any matter? What is the mechanism? And then we say, is it produced once or is it produced continuously? Do the laws of physics always apply or were they different at some point? And is it produced at one point in the center of the Big Bang universe or was it reproduced everywhere all at once and then is it produced in different ways in so-called empty space versus when there's a whole bunch of matter around and some people will say that oh we know how matter and antimatter are produced together and the antimatter just somehow disappears so that we only have matter in our local universe that we can see or or maybe there are stars that are matter and stars that are antimatter and as long as they don't come together they're we're fine and we don't and we'll see big matter antimatter explosions if that were to happen and the problem is, is it's worse than just antimatter matter explosions if a matter and antimatter galaxy collide. Is we're learning continuously that there's filaments between galaxies, plasma, between galaxies and between stars more locally, and even between clusters when we look at the entire universe at one big picture which means that we have plasma in contact with these bodies and if there was an any matter in the plasma or in another galaxy connected to matter plasma we would continuously see matter and antimatter annihilating with each other causing huge explosions and they'd be explosions that are beyond anything that we see in current astronomical observations. If we were seeing matter antimatter explosions of entire stars or galaxies all at once, they would dominate our, our field of view. So these things aren't happening. We really are in a matter universe. So we have to figure out how we only have matter present. And we also know especially with JWST, we can see galaxies as far as away as 13.5 billion light years away. And we know that they didn't get there by expansion because space didn't expand instantaneously, much, much faster than the speed of light in the first few thousand years or a few hundred million years of the universe, however you want to model it. Matter doesn't move faster than light. So, matter was produced 13.5 billion years that way, and that way, and that way, and that way, every which way. And the only way for that to occur is matter was produced everywhere. It wasn't a singularity event at one point which would have formed a black hole anyway, but that's another question. So we have to have production everywhere. And then we have the question is, do the laws of physics change over time? And I say, no, they don't. If, it, if at all, they change in small amounts, in small ways over time, not in huge ways so that the laws of physics change and we could produce matter at one point in time and not produce matter in another point in time. 
I've discussed this before, you can't fine tune the constants because the contents are all interrelated with each other in such a way that there's no tunability. Some of the so-called constants must be variable in order to account for relativistic effects. Depending on what model you're using, it may be different constants, but in general, some constants must vary for that reason. But that's about all the flexibility you have. Because of the interrelationships, you, you can't arbitrarily make major changes to any of the constants and still have our physics work. You break it if you make a major change to any one major constant. So assuming the laws of physics are the same, that means matter was continuously produced. And then in terms of types of matter production, we must consider can it come out of empty space? Can you just out of empty space get a proton or electron or neutron just come into existence? If we're going to say that matter production occurs at all, then yeah, yeah, somehow it has to pop out of empty space, which means popping out of the quantum field. So there has to be some quantum field interaction that can cause us to only get matter, only a, a one proton or one electron in isolated space. And then we have to consider if there's something around, say high voltage plasma, where whatever mechanism allows protons and electrons to pop out of empty space makes it more efficient. So you get more particles being produced. And it doesn't have to be plasma. You can use whatever theory you want. I just wanted to use an example to throw out there. So we should see enhanced matter production somewhere in the universe, like perhaps along the filament strings of plasma, as we sort of observe. So, yes, matter is produced more likely efficiently in these plasma filaments where stars and galaxies are known to be. So, that means that we have continuous matter production everywhere which invalidates the Big Bang model. It's, was, matter production is not a one-time event, and it's not an event located to a single point in space. We didn't have completely law, different laws of physics at one point in time than we have now. The laws of physics are the same as they've always been. But, like I said, I'll allow for maybe some small gradual changes, if that's what your theory is, and we want to look at it. But they're going to be basically the same. So that means matter production is going to be a continuous process. And if matter is produced in plasma along these filaments, as it, we have a hint that it might be, then that changes the game when it comes to our models for star and galaxy develop. It, it really changes our picture if you think of stars and black holes and galaxies growing because they're generating their own matter over time. Although keep in mind that if we have an unlimited in time, an infinite universe time-wise, that you also have to destroy some of that matter, which gives us a different mechanism. And it's interesting that if you can, if we figure out how to make and particularly destroy matter, we will have an infinite source of energy. Forget about fusion. Fusion will be a joke if we figure out how to make matter from scratch or destroy matter in a controlled way. So that's why no one wants to fund the research. The big bangers don't want people to know how matter is produced, even though it's one of the most important questions in physics, is how did the matter get here? Unless you want to assume that it's been here for infinity, it was produced, and it was produced continuously, and it was produced everywhere.
And so that's what I want to talk about today. I hope you liked the talk. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to read more about my research on quantum field theory or particle theory, I have some books for sale. And uh, as always, I thank my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And thanks for watching.